tiro no atua u ki a koe kuperu ngā ana mai matahoru a te waka māre wai a koe ki te tau i hu o te waka o te tipu a māui tiki tiki ko te hiki ngā o te pane tūtū māpo te pānga mai o te whaititiri kei runga rā aro rangi kei raro nei aro nuku ki aro mō mara uh, the concept of waka has come very much from our pepeha. We know that we've come from the, from the Pacific Island nations. Uh, we know that we've sort of lost a lot of our, our, our associated uh, practices with that ocean voyaging. Um, this is a, a very important occasion for us in the launch of the, uh, Waka Te Oere because it is um, the beginnings of restoring an ancient craft that our people depend upon to survive. to um, thank all of you again uh, for braving and participating in Ngāti Kui's cultural event. Our people of Tangata Moana, our people of Tangata Whenua. Uh, we'll just start, we'll be uh, removing our covers. So the couple of people that have been delegated to remove the covers, can you go to your spots please? For Ngāti Kuia, uh, Waka was a great place to get around into our rohe and in our environment into Tauihu Watu Waka a Maui. Uh, the coastal area that we have within our sounds is 1800 kilometres. There was many, many waka and our people used to traverse from Te Tauihu to Waka to Te Upoko in the North Island. So we're going to go into Karakia, uh, everyone. Be nice if everyone's nice and close. You can go on that side as well. We're going to um, unveil the boat upper, and then we're going to go over to do the toehu. But uh, getting the corridor right and getting the tikanga right was first and foremost uh, extremely important. Uh, being there at the right time of the morning, having the karakia and having the people to say the karakia, uh, very important. Our waiata, the waiata that, that had to be chosen that would identify what this waka was about. Um, they, they were chosen for, for these specific purposes. Eke, eke, ke tangaro, eke panuku. Ufi, wero, tau mai te mauri, tu mai te toki, hau pie, huie! Yeah, there was a lot of planning that went into this event uh, and, and, and the, the anxiousness that was, that was happening was around first and foremost having the waka ready. Uh, we were still coming to terms with, with staining, varnishing, the, the end little, the, the final little pieces uh, right on the last day as, as projects do come. The weather wasn't looking too good, it looked like it would rain, it looked like it would blow. Um, having the right people on the ground uh, was, was, was important to, to get the, the gazebos up, to get people in their speaking positions, having everybody understand their roles. As the karakia began and I looked up and the clouds separated and tamarama shone on our kai karakia uh, and tears flowed 
uh, I realised that uh, this was a significant day for, uh, for Ngāti Kui. Will the waka float? We had not floated the waka with the with the towed upper on and with the tow ehu on. So we were wondering about the balance of our waka. Would it sit properly in the water? We had we had the uh, the added risk of of having our chief Waihaere Mason on the waka and our kuia uh, fire Elaine Wilson uh, to to be on there, you know, which was extremely important. We didn't want anything to go wrong, so you know, from putting it in at low, low tide, uh, and having to manoeuvre the boat around into the right position, uh, to the to to being able to push it out safely, that our kaihotu would have all of the calls that were needed to to move the walker out and drive it around. Uh, it was it, it was uh, really, I suppose, made a person really anxious. Um, when I, I seen the waka go out of sight and, and head towards Paul Kiki Wharf and then I couldn't see it and, and, I, and I just didn't know what was going on. But when I was standing at the end of Pier 3, uh, Pier C, and, and, I could, and I could hear it coming back, I knew it had achieved of getting, getting most of the way there and most of the way back and I uh, just felt so happy and I could see the crew coming and I felt so proud. Uh, I had my daughter on there, Moana, my cousins on there, our chief, uh, some lead people, um, and, and it was a success. <laughs> So I've been drawing since I was a little kid. Um, never really done anything professional until I was um, in my 30s. And uh, decided to uh, look into my culture a bit more because I was a city boy. And um, I started carving in 2011. Jumped on a Fukaido course in, uh, under the Wananga Aotearoa. Um, one, one of the key projects that, that we've really wanted to do um, since we've received treaty settlement is to to develop this area, Titi Rokoa, into some type of centre of excellence. We've got training in, in Reo, we, we do our Pākohi Wānanga here, we do Te Reo Miona Tikanga here, and we do waka carving and we do some of our engaging with, uh, with other businesses like apiary, bees, that will connect us to our natural environment. <laughs> When was the last Ngāti Kuia waka, to your knowledge? Um, the, the wakas that, that, that we know of, uh, because they're still here, are the, what we call the Hemi Whero waka, uh, that was created up here and, and made up in this area and transported down to, to, to Te Hora to be completed. Um, they, they, uh, there's other, other, other waka called Te Whitiao, um, the, the last waka also that we had a shared interest in was uh, Te Awa Te Ahau. So that, that brought all of the iwi here. We all had a part of it. Uh, Uncle Jim Walker was a, a key leader for Ngāti Kuia and Ngāti Kuia's representation in that collaborative project of Te Awa Te Ahau for the 150th commemoration of the Treaty of Waitangi. Oh, okay, so we're at uh, Brashaw Museum, Brashaw Park Museum, and this here is a waka that was carved by Hemi Whero uh, sometime in the, uh, in the 19th century. So Hemi Whero was also known as Te Wakarere, and there's a well-known story that Hemi Whero uh, carved and shaped a waka uh, up by Te Hura, 
and when the floods came down, they came down annually, uh, Mehana Kiriopa uh, walked up to, uh, walked up to uh, Te Hura and brought the waka down to Ruapaka and it was at Ruapaka where uh, Mehana's father uh, and Mehana finished putting the final touches on the waka. So that's a well-known story about, uh, about Ngāti Queer uh, producing waka. Uh, this is not that waka, but this is another waka that, uh, that was made by Hemi Whero. Karawe e e e e te e te mahi e te mahi o ngā mātua tūpuna e te tipu ake te mana o te tangata moana e te tangata whenua e te whakakapi o te whakakapi karake o tēnei ahi a hoi anō i noi nga tau oh, Before that, I just like to say hey, congratulations nga te kuia he done it, he done it te hoi ere floats, it goes well the little winner has said that breakfast is cooked and that we must follow the tikanga to go back at Kai and Kōrero and think about the future. This wouldn't happen you know, without, I suppose, without us having some of the benefits of a settlement to help provide the funding and capacity building uh, for us to do what we need to do. So we've tra travelled the world to get here to the last place on earth, and what we're calling the last best place on earth. So um, be proud of our history of Waka. Uh, it's long, it's enduring, and uh, we plan to move it and carry it uh, right into the future. And, and I'm, I know from talking to Ray, but coming down and then seeing how much the Waka meant to a lot of you and to go through the process that we went through today was really, really a great thing. So your Waka is, te hoiere is that is I saw that today as a catalyst for a lot more stuff. It's not just something to go for a hoi on, not just something to go for a cruise around, but it's that vehicle for the recovery of so much other stuff. That we, if we think about a waka, that a, that a waka is like a needle. And when it moves around the Pacific, or it moves around our different um, kainga around Aotearoa, it's like a needle that sews all those places together. It sows all. It sows all the talk. It sows all of the um, the thinking. And so, if we, if we take that cope up on board a little bit more with the name of this event that we're um, a part of now, two year two fifty, that's the cope up that that we hope is trying to come out of this. That two year will actually weave and bind together all the different people of Aotearoa but it will still be that platform for us to be able to give our stories out there.